Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Pagan. In today's lesson, we will be solving radical equations with two radicals. We have done it, uh, or solved these problems before with one radical, but now we're gonna just go ahead and spice it up a little. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is, if you see an example such as the one that we're looking at right now, uh, with two radicals in there, and if they're on the same side of the equation, we want to make sure that one of the radicals is on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and add 2 square root of x to the right side of the equation. And what we end up getting is square root of 3x plus 2 stays on the left side of the equation, and it's equal to 2 square root of x. Now we want to go ahead and get rid of the square root and since there is one on each side, we can go ahead and do that quickly by squaring both sides of the equation because a square root and a square will cancel each other out. Square root and the square cancel each other out. We're left with 3x plus 2 equals. Now in this case, you do have to be careful. Uh, the square actually distributes both to the 2 as well as the square root of x. So we end up getting 2 squared, which is 4, which we'll write in the next step, and then the square root and the square cancel each other out here, and we're left with just an x. So we're left with 3x plus 2 equals 4x. That's a linear equation, so we're going to go ahead and solve that like we would in Algebra 1 by subtracting 3x on both sides and we're left with 2 equals 1x, which is the same thing as x, so x equals 2. Um, unfortunately, I don't feel comfortable saying that's the answer until I check my work, because with radicals, um, you might end up getting some imaginary numbers, so we want to make sure that we um, check our work. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back to the original equation. We have 3 times, um, I'll put parentheses for now, and I'll put in the 2's in a different color. So every place that I see an x, I'm going to go ahead and replace that with our 2 that we think could be possibly the answer. All right, square root of, we have 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8, minus 2 root 2 equals 0. Now, we know that square root of 8 is the same thing as um, 2 times 4, and square root of 4 is 2 and the root 2 does not simplify more, so 2 root 2 minus 2 root 2 equals 0. Does 2 root 2 minus 2 root 2 equals 0? Yes, therefore it does check, therefore x minus 2 is a solution. Or I'm sorry, x equals 2 is a solution. There we go. Alright, let's go ahead and solve another problem. Uh, in example B, what you'll notice is now we're not dealing with a square root, rather than we're dealing with a fourth root. So um, the nice thing, however, is that there's a fourth root on each side of the equation, so we don't have to move anything ourselves. So we're going to go ahead and get started by taking the fourth power on both sides to try to eliminate the fourth root. On the left side, it's once again pretty easy. The fourth root and the fourth power cancel out, and we're left with 4x minus 5 equals. On the right side, you want to make sure you distribute the power to everything, and that includes the 2, and I'm kind of going to go around from there. So we're left with 3 raised to the 4th power divided by 2 raised to the 4th power, and the square root of, or 4th root of x raised to the 4th power is just x. I'm simplifying it right away, but you can also rewrite it. We have 4x minus 5 equals 3 raised to the 4th power is 81, and 2 raised to the 4th power is 16x. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to subtract the 4x to the other side. We're left with negative 5 equals 17 over 16x. And then the last but not least, we're going to go ahead and multiply by reciprocal to get x by itself. Ooh, sorry. 16 was on top. What did I say? 17. So we're left with x equals, and that's equal to negative 80 over 17. Uh, now, don't think I'm a genius. I was using my calculator to make those calculations, so I hope you were too so that you know that you're using your calculator correctly.
All right, let's go ahead and check our work. We have the fourth root of four times blank, which we'll put our value, minus five equals three halves of fourth root of blank. All right, and in, our, in the blank goes what we just figured out, which is negative 80 over 17 and negative 80 over 17. Um, now, right off the bat, I can say that this is not going to work, and I think it's because of this part right here. We have a fourth root of a negative number, and a fourth root of, or, or an even root of a negative number is going to give us an imaginary solution. So, uh, but if you don't believe me, let's just go ahead and check our work. I'm going to move our calculator to the side here. Uh, let's go ahead and go to, press 4 first, go to math, and take number 4, which is, Oh, I'm sorry, number five. Clear that out. Four, go back to math. I'm sorry, that was number five is what we want. And in parentheses, we're going to put negative 80 divided by 17. And when we do that, it says non-real answers. Um, and if I actually tell the calculator to go to the section, it's going to bring me back to the original. And part of the reason is because of the negative 80 over 17, as we talked about earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. Therefore, this is not a solution. Um, and therefore, we can say negative 80 over 17 is not a solution. All right, let's go on to our last example. Um, in this example, we have once again two radicals, and these are cube roots. So we're going to go ahead and move one of them to the other side. These cancel out, so we're left with cube root of 2x squared plus 4 equals the cube root of 3x squared minus 5. All right, in order to get rid of the cube roots, we're going to have to take the cube on both sides of the equation. These uh, end up canceling each other out. You're left with 2x squared plus 4 equals, and on the right side, the cube root and the cube also cancel out. We're left with 3x squared minus 5. We're going to go ahead and combine like terms. I'm going to just go ahead and move this negative 2 or 2x squared to the right side of the equation. We're left with 4 equals x squared minus 5. And when we add the 5, we get x squared equals 9. Uh, we're going to continue solving for x. We're almost done. In order to get rid of the x squared, we're going to have to square root both sides. And since it is an even root, we're going to have two answers, one positive, one negative, 3. All right, I know I circled that, but we do have to still check our answers. So I'm going to go ahead and use the original equation. Let's go ahead and check to see if x equals 3 is a solution first. So we have the cube root of 2 blank squared plus 4 minus the cube root of 3 blank. Ooh, where did everything go? Sorry. There we go. Squared minus 5. And we're going to hope that that equals 0. So let's go ahead and check it out. We're going to go ahead and put our 3 in for our value. And let's do some mental math. We have the cube root of 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18 plus 4 is 22 minus cube root of 3 squared is 9 again times 3 is 27 minus 5 is 22 equals 0. And we can tell that cube root of 22 minus the cube root of 22 is equal to 0. Therefore, x equals 3 is a solution. So x equals 3 is good to go. It is a solution. Now let's test x equals negative 3. I'm going to do that underneath here. x equals negative 3. We're just testing it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that cube root of 2 blank squared plus 4 minus cube root of 3 blank squared minus 5 equals 0. And the number we're testing right now is negative 3. Negative 3. All right, let's see. Cube root of 
Negative 3 squared is 9 again, times 2 is 18, plus 4 is once again 22, minus the cube root of negative 3 squared is 9 again, times 3 is 27, minus 5 is 22 as well, equal to 0. So therefore, we're back to 0 equals 0. Therefore, x equals negative 3 is also a solution. So here are our solutions for the equation that we just solved above. All right, everybody, that was our lesson for today. We're going to be working on this more uh, the next time we see you in class. Please continue reviewing your notes um, and going back to the beginning of this chapter. It is a tough chapter, and we want you to succeed. So we'll see you in class. Have a good day.